My name is Dorothy Johnson Spite. I'm founder and executive director of Mothers in Charge. You're watching What's Your Point of View? Hi, I'm State Representative Thaddeus Kirkland. On June 6th, join me and Mothers in Charge for a very, very important movement. We're going to Washington to fight for justice and peace and stopping the violence in our community. So on June 6th, make sure you're there. Get on the bus, the bus for peace and justice. Tell me what's your point of view? What's your point of view? What's your point of view? It is your view. It's time to hear from you. Welcome to Point of View. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of What's Your Point of View. On this episode, we're going to really get down into it and talk about the violence and the seriousness of what is going on across the country. So today we want to welcome State Representative Thaddeus Kirkland to the Point of View show. Hello. Hello, Amanda. <laughs> Thank you for having me this evening. It is a pleasure, and I'm, the work that you have already done speaks for itself. But today, just tell us a little bit about yourself for the viewers that may not know you. Sure, sure. First of all, I just want to say that I'm here in support of Mothers in Charge. Uh, Dorothy Spice has been doing an excellent job working with uh, the mothers whose children have been victims of violence. Also, uh, our sister, their sister chapter, uh, Women, in Strength, Women of Strength, in this, out of the city of Chester, um, wanted to come today just to share our point of view on uh, the violence that is plaguing our communities yes. that is uh, right now is at epidemic for, uh, form. Definitely. And at the epidemic le levels and how we begin to combat that and bring a sense of peace to our communities. Okay, now I know that you um, have one of the unions that are helping with the movement. Can you just talk about the ideas surrounded by having them come and talk to young men or you know young people in general? Sure, sure. The violence in the communities, uh, folks think that we'll, we're gonna police our way out of this and it's not gonna happen. You see what's happening in other parts of the country with uh, the clashes that the community has with the, with the police officers because there's not a lot of trust there. We want to look at it in a different way and come at it in a different way. One, we want to talk to our young people about Votech, Votech training. Okay. That's not available a lot in our schools right now like it used to be in junior high school mm -hmm. and high school. And so we want to go to the neighborhoods and actually talk to these young people about getting involved in a vocational, in a trade. And one of the ways we do that is by bringing some of those persons from various unions, and particularly in my area, mm -hmm. uh, James Harper Jr. from Local 413 and, and some of the fine people down there, mm -hmm. to come with us into these neighborhoods, into these neighborhoods where a lot of violence is taking place, right. to actually talk to these young people and try to recruit them into their union so that they might be, have an op opportunity to have access to uh, the different, tr the various trades that are available. Also, we're going to talk to our young people about education because right. you don't go nowhere without it. Yeah. Nowhere but down without it. So exactly. uh, some of them fear, uh, they fear education more than they do the, the various gangs of these guns. Yeah, so, the streets. They yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we can get them back involved and engaged, um, they want somebody to, to, to engage them. To, and relate to them. And relate to them. Mm -hmm. And the final piece that, that, that really weighs on me is also uh, having a a head of a police department that is Present. visible, that is visible yes. in the neighborhoods and talking to these young folks, mm -hmm. talking to their parents, talking to the community. That leaders. is very important because as of right now, the police image is negative. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that I know police officers and it's like, you kind of struggle like, um, like I, you know, you want like I pray for you and hope that you know everything goes well today. Then the kids, okay, I pray for you, hope everything. Mm -hmm. Cause it's kind of like you're doing the same thing and you print, and it's like okay, that's definitely a key point to have um, an officer there in that uniform, so they don't see that uniform as a threat and kind of come together. So that is that is so important. I have three members of my family, uh, three of my brothers who are, f are former. One is one doesn't have sense enough to retire. Former, Can't or, let go. Or, or yeah, police, <laughs> police officers, or law enforcement officers, mm -hmm. and 
um, they are engaged in their communities. Mm -hmm. They are uh, they they reach out there in communities. They're involved in different exactly. activities, civic associations, and events in the community. They're involved in the lives of the young people. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we are missing in in a community like Chester is a police at, police athletic league. Pal, where yes. they come together and work with the kids. It's not always about locking them up, mm -hmm. but working with them, reading with them, playing ball with them, right. just having a conversation with them. Because a lot of them are just acting out. Exactly. It's like, it's not really acting up, but from the outside look at it, it looks like they're acting up, but they're really just acting out for attention. And some of them, if you grab a hold of them, like, what you doing? They be like, I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. And sometimes that's all you gotta do is grab a hold of them. <laughs> like, what you doing? Old I school. don't know. Come on, let's go get some ice cream. It, and it just seemed like it had changed their lives, especially if, you know, with the men coming together and they seeing other men, because a lot of them don't have that example in the house. And we have a lot to do. I mean, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, and I'm hoping to use something that was very tragic as a way to get out some of our, especially our young African American males to open their mm -hmm. eyes. And that is, uh, for, there are two instances. One, where the three young boys, I don't mm -hmm. call them young men, three young boys, I think there were two of them, 15, one mm -hmm. was 14, uh, took the life of a, the, the, the person walking his dog. Mm -hmm. And if you look at them on camera, you look at them on the news, you see nothing but fear and confusion. Yeah. And the sad part is that of that is that their lives are ruined now. It's over. They're done, and folks don't. And I look far beyond that, because here, here's a 15, two 15 year olds and a 14 year olds, year older. Think about it. They've never fathered a child. Mm -hmm. That means generations. It stopped right there. Generations are lost, and that's what I'm trying to get these young people to understand. It, it, it. it you're, you're cutting off your future. Mm -hmm. And there's another young person in my area who um, they just sentenced to life in prison. Mm. 16, 17 years old, life is gone. And, and we have to find a way. We have mm -hmm. to find a way to, to get our young people to understand that, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm real blunt when it comes to talking to young people, yeah. that the, the, the strong persons, or the, the strong persons, mm -hmm. they're the ones that uh, punch that clock at nine to five, they're yeah. the ones that go to that classroom and study to show themselves approved. They're mm -hmm. the ones that stand up in their community right. for what are the things that are right. The, the passive persons mm -hmm. are the ones who sit back and pull a gun on somebody and yeah. decide, well, you know what, I'm in somebody's life and I'm going to ruin my own because I'm, a, I'm afraid exactly. of the challenges of life. And that is so key. When they pull that trigger, you might be ending somebody's life, but you're also ending your own life. And they don't see it like exactly. that. It's exactly. It's like the one guy who, um, it was, um, he beat up his girlfriend or something, and they gave him his sentence. And he's passing out. It was like, you should think about the consequences of your actions before you do them. Exactly. And most of them know the consequences. They just have a I don't care moment. But that well, I don't care moment can cost you, li you, you your life. We've, we've, when I was chairman of the Black Caucus and uh, Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus, along with Ron Waters and others, we toured a mini prison. Hmm. And to see young men, young men behind these bars and young men literally losing their minds behind these bars mm -hmm. for two reasons. Number one, they've been there so long. Number two, for what they've done. Right. It weighs on them, mm -hmm. it comes back at them, and, and they're there for life. That is so true. So, State Representative, we thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure, and I look forward to coming back. On this segment, we will be continuing to talk about violence and how it's plaguing our community and how it's plaguing our country. Stay tuned of more of What's Your Point of View. Remember one thing, remember one thing That one man can change the world that One man can change the world Welcome to Speak Out Philadelphia Where we want you to embrace the debate Every Thursday night, Comcast 66 and Verizon Channel 30. You don't want to miss it. We have every right to know why the police are stopping. Well, the police have about two point some seconds to make a decision. Right. <laughs> Most of the brothers I know is carrying something. <laughs>
<laughs> in front of the kids, he put up no fight. <laughs> Anybody on welfare for more than five, five years is an idiot. The misconception okay. is that it's just people of color. Let's see something. Could you date a guy that used to be gay? No. That's what I thought. <laughs> we have seen it so much that we're desensitized when they say they're born gay. Mm -hmm. say, that's why the Bible says we have to be born again. Hi, I'm Sweet Franchon, and I'm honored to share with you the segment Peace, Love, and Poetry on What's Your Point of View. We're going to talk about today love, of course, because with Valentine's Day just passing, some of us who don't have mates or are single, we've been feeling a little blah and maybe not feeling loved. But I want to share a few things with you today. It's not really about if someone called you or texted you on Valentine's Day, every day should be a love day. It's about how are you sharing love? Are you sharing your gifts with the world on a daily basis? Are you reaching out to people you care about that mean something to you? Or are you going to wait until they're no longer here? Do you want to give someone flowers now or later? What are you doing in your life? How are you expressing love in your life? Now, I know we all go through something. Y'all watching these celebrities on television and following all these folk on Instagram. Everybody, life happens to everybody. In fact, I stand here speaking with you today with a hole in my heart. But the difference is, is that I can get up because I know I'm serving my purpose. I know I am doing what I'm called to do. I know that I must share my gifts with the world. What's your gift? I don't know, maybe you cook well. People love when you cook. You bring people together. Maybe you make jewelry, maybe you make clothes, maybe you just spend time and listen well to others. I don't know what your love language is. I don't know how you share with others. But I question if you're sharing or you're just waiting passively for someone to reach out to you and share with you. That's not really what it's about. You give it freely, it will come freely. In all things, it's a universal law. I want to share with you today and ask you to take the time and share your expression of love today, in this moment, with someone, anyone. Forget Valentine's Day. It's enough people that want you in their lives, want to share their energy with you, and want to love you. Does that mean you're going to be in a relationship, meaning uh, a mate type of relationship? Maybe not. But there's enough people who love and want to be in your space and energy. So don't worry about Valentine's Day. Make every day a love day. I don't care if you're mad. I don't care if you cussed at them yesterday. I don't care. I do it. We're all human. But always go back to love. Work on your first relationship, which is the most important, loving God or that spiritual being. I don't know what you call it. Work on that relationship, and all the other relationships will fall into place. Then think about your own relationship. Do you like the company you keep when you're alone in those darkest moments when no one else is around? Some of y'all don't like yourselves. Problem. Work on it. Forgive yourself for anything that you haven't been able to sleep over at night. If you work on those two relationships, I promise you that all else will become beautiful and sunny in your life. Over time, it's all temporary. And of course, I wrote a poem about it. It's called Bring Me Flowers. Bring me flowers. Bring me Calla lily kisses, rose petaled hugs, and sunflower stories. Let me sit at your feet and know what you do in love. Bring me flowers through your gifts of conversation, sweet loving, and pure attention. Bring me flowers in your own love language so that we can create something that is free, ageless, and timeless, and most of all, priceless. Bring me flowers. Bring me calla lily kisses, rose petaled hugs, and sunflower stories. Share with me while I'm in this moment with you, sharing this space and energy with you, creating a dance only between two. Bring me 
flowers. Bring me calla lily kisses, rose petaled hugs, and sunflowered stories. Please don't wait until I transition to glory. Share with me right now in this moment how true love is really meant. Bring me your flowers. Bring me your calla lily kisses, rose petaled hugs, and sunflower stories. Bring me flowers. My name is Dorothy Johnson Spite, and I am founder and executive director of Mothers in Charge. On Saturday, June 6, 2015, Mothers in Charge will be in Washington, D.C. on the Lincoln Memorial Mall at the Reflecting Pool with hundreds of thousands of families who've been affected by violence and those the organizations that care about this issue to stand together as one voice to say, enough is enough. We're beginning a movement that will address the issue of violence in our communities across this country. Will you join us Saturday, June 6th at 10 a.m., Washington, D.C., Lincoln Memorial Mall? It's time to hear from you. Welcome to Point of Hope. Hello, everyone. Welcome to What's Your Point of View. I am your host, Amanda Johnson, and we have a continuation segment today about the violence and how it's plaguing our community and how it's plaguing our country. So this segment, we have an awesome woman, Miss Dorothy Johnson Spites, and we thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, you have been moving and been working. So first, let's talk about um, what is Mothers in Charge, MIC? Sure. Mothers in Charge is a group of mothers, grandmothers, aunts and sisters who have lost sons, daughters, and loved ones to violence. Mm -hmm. And um, I started the organization in May of 2003 mm -hmm. to address the issue of gun violence. Okay. Now we have been, you know, every time, you know, something goes on, you or someone from your, representing your, the Mothers in Charge is on the scene. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you um, do, every time something goes on, do you immediately reach out or do they reach out to you? A little bit of both. Uh, Mothers in Charge has become a household name, mm -hmm. you know, in Philadelphia as well as across this country. So oftentimes we get and connect with families through word of mouth, people who know about us, people who have benefited from our support services and all the things that we provide to the community. So they will call for family and friends or folks that they know when something like, you know, um, a death happens or occurs as a result of homicide. Mm -hmm. So when you um, support, how, does it just moral support or do you kind of just sit down and let them know, okay, this is what you need to do and just kind of provide that comfort? What's the process? Okay, someone had a, a, a situation and you're going out. What's the process well, that you, that you sure, support? Sure, sure, sure. And I'll start from the beginning. Um, Whenever there's a murder in the city of Philadelphia, um, we get that information from the Homicide Department of Philadelphia Police. So the first thing we do is send out a card, a sympathy card to that family, letting them know that, you know, we're sorry, our deepest sympathy, and we understand, you know, some of what you're going through. Okay. And we let them know that, th that we're here for them, and we provide all kinds of support programs. We have grief support, you know, every Thursday at our office where folks can kind of begin to understand the whole grief process and what they're experiencing as a result of having lost someone to violence. So that's the initial thing we do. But we, you know, we're with them on that journey, you know, all the way, whether it's, you know, a uh, trial if there's been, you know, someone apprehended for the murder of their loved one. We're with them, you know, in the courtroom. We do whatever we can to support families when this tragedy has happened. Okay. Now with, um the home base for Mothers in Charge is right here in Philadelphia. That's correct. But I know that you, you have branches and connections that are opening up. How did you expand and how did it just grow so yeah. rapidly? Yeah, I mean, I think initially when I realized that I wanted to live after my son's death, mm. I knew that I wanted to make a difference across the country because I had met so many mothers and um, families who had lost loved ones other than just in Philadelphia. You know, as you're traveling the country, you're going to conferences or you're connecting with family and friends across the country, you're meeting people almost everywhere you go who's lost someone to violence. And so I think initially the idea came to me as a result of MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, yes. because they're a national organization and when you think of 
people drinking and driving, you think of that. So I think that was how I kind of always thought that I wanted to be an organization, you know, across the country that addressed that. Because there's always strength in, you know, unity in one voice. Yeah. So that's what we've done. We have chapters throughout the country, LA, San Francisco, yeah. Kansas City, Amazing. Brooklyn, LA, you know, New Jersey, all over the country. And we connect with other organizations that do similar work. So we are organizing across the country to address the issue of violence and homicide. That is amazing because it is really plaguing the United yeah, States, unnecessary violence. It is. So if somebody wanted to um, get in contact with Mothers in Charge MIC, how could they do that? Sure. Um, they could go to our website, mothersincharge.org, or they could visit our office at 1415 North Broad Street, right on Broad between Master and Jefferson Street okay. in the heart of North Philadelphia. They can come and we're looking for volunteers. People don't have to have lost someone to right. be a part of this. Exactly. All right. Stay tuned. We will have more of Mothers in Charge right after this. Hi, my name is Nigel Lee, and I'm a singer, rapper, actor, model, and you're watching What's Your Point of View? Welcome to Speak Out Philadelphia, where we want you to embrace the debate. Every Thursday night, Comcast 66 and Verizon Channel 30. You don't want to miss it. Yeah. All you ABW sitting at home, angry black woman, <laughs> something like her. You can't he, have no more jokes. He violated the female code. That is a man. You got no business putting your hands on a man. I'm, 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 I'm going to take care of this, but you know you put your, your, your dad in a situation right, right. Right. that he shouldn't be. Let me, you got a place as a all, woman, and you need to know your say. place. It's not that, when he decides, or a woman decides that they're going to date him, they know exactly what they're signing up for. Right? He's from a Samacaho <laughs> tribe, and he, look, look, he could be from a Choker Bitch tribe, too. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Because white women with big behinds, right? The that's, new KKK. That's, that's, the you get paid. Hoes don't get paid. Oh yeah, well, no, no, they don't get paid. Well, well they might get some. It wasn't like it was Superhead, cause now Superhead <laughs> deserve a trophy, cause I ain't never seen nothing like that before. That this is Conscious, and I'd like to welcome y'all to Testimony Live. Dear hurt people, there are days that I wake up trying to convince myself I am not afraid. I can do this. I am not afraid. I can do this. I am not afraid. I can do this. Secretly building up a wall of confidence to keep out the insecurities I've been facing my whole life. Intimidated by the opinions of others. Living life undercover because my struggle seems to not be discovered. You see, I'm just like you. Afraid of what tomorrow brings or afraid to speak about my relationship with Christ because I might be challenged. Knowing that victory is mine, but afraid to spread the knowledge I'm afraid. Afraid to be a waste of time. And see, God moved down the line and choose someone else for a blessing that was designed to be mine. It's funny how making wrong turns could put you back on the right path. Because now, I'm starting to understand my struggles, and I'm getting used to this mental pain. And no more will I let the weight of my past keep me buried, you see? I'm just like you, realizing that this ain't it for me, and that I was just fighting for practice because I already won. And, and before I stop making myself sick in the mind, going crazy time after time, praying to God, help me, stand here with me, walk with me, walk with me, walk with me, walk with me. You see, I'm just like you, realizing that I need to move to the side and let God take the wheel. And maybe I'll stop crashing into the wrong folks because the road I chose seems to keep me lost. But with the right guidance in the right direction, I will return home just like you. Now, let's get back to what's your point of view with Amanda Johnson. It's time to hear from you. Welcome to Point of View. Welcome back. We are still here with Miss Dorothy Johnson Spites. Now, you. I looked at the website and y'all have so much going on. Talk to us about thinking for a change. Yeah. Thinking for a change is really what we want people to do, right? right. We want them to um, think differently so they'll behave differently. Okay. So we do a program, it's a, it's a cognitive skills program, and we started doing it probably about five or six years ago in some of the Philadelphia County prisons. And it's a curriculum that we teach, 
you know, a way of thinking differently, giving folks tools to be able to do something different than engage in violence. Mm -hmm. So now we're even doing it um, in community centers and other places. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's really something that we all could benefit from. Right. You know, it teaches anger management, it teaches uh, ways to check yourself before you get involved in conflict and things like that. So it's an excellent cognitive yes. skills program. It's definitely needed yes. because a lot of them adults mm -hmm. <laughs> and kids are not being taught that That's there's right. a different way to handle situations That's right. and they're you know normally the um, example that they have in their house demonstrates the, how they handle Absolutely. situations Absolutely. and you know conflict mm -hmm. but you also have mentoring talk to us about that we have a mentoring program for teen girls um, each Wednesday we have a group of about 20 25 young ladies between the ages of 12 and 17 that come to our office for mentoring and we have a volunteer group of women who volunteer to help them with self-esteem academically everything you know tools that they need to be successful as young girls you know so because one day they're going to be somebody's mom right, right. so we want to give them the skills and, and information they need to be all that they can be exactly that mm -hmm. is so important and so to evolve from something that, you know, yeah. a situation yeah. to now just helping people after people after yeah. people. But you guys are doing so much. I looked at the calendar. It's like event, yeah. event, event, yeah. event. But let's talk about the one event getting on the bus. Sure. So tell us a thought process and what's expected sure. at this event. Uh, the th thought process was actually to figure out a way that we gain national attention mm -hmm. for an issue that is mm -hmm. national. Right. So we decided we wanted to be at the White House. Well to get that national attention and bring the resources and everything that's needed to make a difference with the issue of homicide. Because homicide is a leading cause of death among African American males 14 to 24, or maybe 14 to 34 at this point. I think it's, you know, has gr grown to, um, but we wanted to um, have a way that that gets the attention. So we're going to be going to Washington, D.C. for this major rally. It's a national rally. Mm -hmm. People are coming as far as San Francisco, uh, Detroit, Michigan, which I'll be on uh, the plane pretty soon going there. Um, people from all over the country are coming together in the National Mall in Washington, D.C. to say enough is enough mm -hmm. and we want to change. And that change and that movement will begin on that day. I, I mean, I've seen the different connections and it's just people after people, I'm going, yeah, I'm going, yeah. I'm going to support. Yeah. Where's my t-shirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One lady on Facebook was yeah. like, I gotta have a t-shirt. Yeah, it's, it's become almost contagious and people really, people are tired yes. of the violence and they want to mm -hmm. be a part of the change. Exactly. Yeah. And Mothers in Charge is definitely making a change. Oh. Now, can you give us some, I know that, you know, it started with a, a personal situation. Could you give us some information about that situation? Sure. My 24-year-old uh, son, colleague Jabbar Johnson, mm -hmm. was uh, shot to death mm -hmm. over a parking space mm -hmm. um, several years ago. And I wanted to do something with my anger yes. and my tears and my pain, find a way to live after that tragedy. And so I started Mothers in Charge okay. with a group of uh, courageous mothers who had also lost their children. Mm -hmm. and those courageous women are still standing today, you know, working every single day, could have laid down and died, yeah. but get up every day to make a difference with this issue. Yes, and that, that's the awesome thing is that you made that decision now. Was it the support that you received or was it just a moment, it's like, no, I need to live so that he can continue to live, that kind of got you to getting mothers in charge rolling? I think when someone loses a son, daughter, loved one, mm -hmm. they want to, be involved in something that that person continues to live yes. and be a part of who they are. Mm -hmm. So, and also to realize that their, their death was not in vain, that they can get up in that person's name, in that son or that daughter's name mm -hmm. or that loved one's name and mm -hmm. say, he lived, he died, but I'm not, I'm going to be the voice for him. I'm going to speak for those who speak no more. All right. Yeah. Well, the, the movement, the activities is definitely making an impact. So I thank you so much for joining yeah. us today. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned. We'll have more of What's Your Point of View right after this. Tell me Tell what's me your what's point your of view. R&B, pop, and hip hop right. right here in the studio. Living in the moment. I'm still making. Yeah. But I'm just going with the flow. I'm having okay. fun. Welcome to. Yeah. <laughs>